Hey, good evening. This is just a really quick review video covering Friday's trading and possible direction for next week. First thing to really note is this breakout move or what looks like a breakout move on the dollar index. So we had this move above um, the range that's developed over the past month. Quite a sell off in equities as well. Um, you know, earlier in the week, I was actually expecting we'd move down below this support, but I think that may be coming in the next week or two. I think, I don't think this is the beginning of a large kind of bullish move for the dollar. I think it's more the kind of up thrust after distribution. Um, reason I say that is because we haven't had a spring. If it was an accumulation, we'd have a move below the support first. And then a bullish move. I mean, that isn't set in stone, but uh, it's just what I'm expecting for now. And, you know, we're not going to pick the top of the market or anything, but it's very good to have a kind of idea of future direction. So the way I'll be playing it on Monday is looking for a move above this 10th of April high. There's supply up here and looking for a pullback watching this demand area and seeing if the structure changes down or if we move above the 3rd of April high and there's more supply above there as well. So either of those two scenarios I can see. Um, and then eventually, I still think for now, we're going to move down to 100 or so, um, given US yields. We had this big drop um, at the Silicon Valley Bank collapse. And that move hasn't really recovered, so the market's still pricing and rate cuts for the future. I think that will translate into a bearish dollar, you know, in the medium term. I think, you know, there's a lot of chat about the debt ceiling and how that's not been resolved yet, but I think we've been here before and I don't, I don't think policymakers will let that get to crisis point. So we'll play by ear, not try and pick the top here, but one place to watch for a pullback will be after a break of this 10th of April high. Um, and that fits in with other markets as well, I think. So a bit more north movement first, maybe a slight pullback and then more bullishness on the dollar for Monday, Tuesday. Then watch for that pullback. Um, so move over to GU, that would translate into maybe a small pullback into this imbalance. And then I'm looking out at 124. If you go to the futures market profile, here, you see a lot of volume just at this level. So I expect a hard bounce there, or I'll be watching for it anyway. But since we're so close to this untested volume, I'm looking for shorts initially for Monday, Tuesday. So maybe a little pullback and then try and find a high volume node or something in here and then look at the order book for confirmation to go short to 124 and then look for a possible reversal. So that would take us below these equal lows down to this area and watching for a bounce there. So Friday was pretty interesting on GU. Got in fact, the whole week was really good. Um, profitable day on Friday. And in fact, every day of the week, apart from Thursday, which was a break even day, which was a, I was largely staying away from because of the interest rate announcement and US unemployment. So the market was a bit wild. So I just sidestepped it mostly. But um, Friday, first of all, I traded this down movement. So European opening at seven o'clock and just just before about six thirty. Usually a move starts about six thirty to seven o'clock and then it picks up volume at seven o'clock a.m. That's UK time. So I'd went short here. Just before seven, caught like 20, 25 pips. I post all these trades live on Discord by the way before the fact and after the fact. So that's live in real time. Um, if you want to check up, just join my free Discord and you can see. A post all these calls there's nowhere to hide um but anyway I caught that short the reason for that was we were just sitting above liquidity here um 
like large persistent liquidity on the bid. Sure enough, seven o'clock. Usually get a big pickup in volume at seven, so I just traded that short and got out very quickly. Um, you can see multiple absorption here. Trapped sellers, so uh, pretty much instantly went in long. Not not quite instantly. So it looked like I saw this bullish volume pick up. Um, I think I was in by this point, but you could have got in. You know, as it pulled back and retested this imbalance. Uh, that was where I got in actually it was a this imbalance and then it formed another it was you know volume started picking up quite heavily and that was this move here um so yeah there's a few opportunities to get in long there um unfortunately I kind of overheld it a little bit and only took partials up here and I think I re-entered here on the retest this demand here. You can see demand created break of structure. I think I got back in there. This was a very interesting kind of spot that I was watching. I was considering going short here, but I'd, I became married to a kind of bullish bias during the day and only ended up taking partials here and not reversing. But there was clear signs in the order book to go short. Um, you could see cumulative um, volume. Neither buyers nor sellers really in charge, and they got absorbed in this kind of thick level in the order book. Um, you know, over over a hundred contracts per per unit there, so that that would have been a good place to go short, but missed that unfortunately, and then it sold off all day quite dramatically. You know, classic Friday move. This is profit taking. This, it absolutely collapsed Friday afternoon so I just actually went, I actually went in long after a break of the prior day's low and it was a fine trade like if you're a scalper that's you know going long here there's absolutely nothing wrong with that contacted demand broke yesterday's low and then had full confirmation had absorption here and then repeated bullish imbalances, kind of stacked imbalances. So it was it was fine for long, but again, I only took partials and did not did not foresee quite quite a dramatic sell off in the Friday. So, but it's still profit, good profits for the day. So for sure, I'll be looking for sales. Uh, I, I won't know quite where until the morning, um, until Frankfurt kind of London session open. I won't know where the liquidity is in this kind of zone, but primarily looking for a sell down to 124 and then probably long after that. Euro kind of inverse of dollar index. I think this move is the spring and kind of white coffee in terms. We've seen have had this range again for the last month. I think this is kind of a liquidity grab and we'll move below 10th of April low. Um, and then there's supply, sorry, demand down here. That's mislabeled. And there's a couple of high volume nodes. Again, we won't try and buy. I think when momentum enters the market, it usually overshoots, especially in FX, it usually overshoots where you where you plan to um, catch it, as it were. So I'll just be going with shorts until we have a clear change in structure to the upside. But given that kind of breakout move in the dollar, I think when it does turn, It'll be quite sudden. It'll be a big kind of dramatic V-shaped reversal at some some place. So it'll be quite hard to catch. They always make reversals quite difficult to catch in FX. It's just the way the nature of the market. Um, but we'll see. We'll see on the day, and I'll try and post what I'm thinking throughout the week. Um, dollar yen. Give it a sec while it loads. Just while that's loading, we can have a quick look at gold. Um, I'm looking for a move above Friday's high, and we've got this site level at 2025, which is also a 
previous day's point of control and previous week's point of control. And that's probably a sell off down below these lows. Um, that'll match kind of further bullishness on the dollar, I think. If you go back to our forecast a week or two ago on Discord, I marked out these supply areas as possible sell points. Uh, they turned out to be pretty good. My forecast was, you know, sell from down here, up here, sorry. Um, I didn't actually trade gold much last week, but I think around here is a possible place to look for a sell in this in this imbalance kind of area and wait for a break of Friday's high. And I think we'll test all the volume down here again. dollar yen chart's not loading so I'll just move on to discord and UJ got these two thick levels on the market profile high supply up here and here at 136.380 kind of level on 137.490 so how will that look there's an imbalance here we can look for buys, I think further buys, pro take profit here and here, and then look for a reversal up at kind of 137.444. That's just a previous week's point of control, but further bullishness for the early part of the week. And that's all really. I think the only other thing I was looking at was the S&P 500. This is the spot chart. We've got this kind of internal range and we're, we're sitting on supply and the previous week's point of control here. So I think we'll sell down to this demand at um, 4,080 and that's kind of an inflection point where we could go bullish or we might sell off down to here. Our forecast two weeks ago was to look for absorption up here and sell off down to here. So it's, it did that, it touched here. It's currently on its kind of south journey now. So look for sales at current price down to 4080 then we'll look for a change in structure bullish or conti continuing sell off but that, that would be a good little intraday trade there and that's it so we'll see how it goes next week feel free to join free discord um be good to see you there post all my trades live um you can see how we approach the market um kind of using a mixture of price action and order flow using book map a lot now to, to refine entries it's working really really well and um, it's just kind of added an extra layer of um, confidence and accuracy I would say it's, it's really helped quite a lot so catch you later